Hello everyone. I'm your host today, the world's best streamer out there, some say. Um, especially if you saw my last stream, which was amazing, where I got absolutely nothing wrong as I was doing it. So, I don't know if we're going to find anyone that wants to join the stream today. It is Friday here in the United States. What is it? Uh, many other parts of the world, it's uh, already your Saturday. Hey, Evil Cupra, good to see you. Yeah, so as we wait for folks to file in, um, I can just lament about how horrible the, the last stream was, but this time it's only up from here, so hopefully I can uh, hit the right buttons. Uh, let's do a quick uh, calibration check on the uh, calibration for the mix cast. I moved the camera around a little bit. I didn't like the angle before because I couldn't get my hands in there. Hey, Giga Gamer, good to see you. Hey, Justin, good to see you. All right, let's get mix cast up. I, I suppose I could probably do this stuff in advance, which I did earlier today. We were kind of messing around with stuff in my office, but I like to trip over the webcam over there. Ah, yeah, I'll be able to get my hands in there a bit better. Give it some more fiducial dots to catch here. Oops, let me try that again. I didn't mean to hit apply. I wanted to calibrate again. Yeah, Mixcast, it, it doesn't, at these low angles and when there's stuff kind of in the way, it doesn't always calibrate perfect. That looks pretty good. All right, we pr are probably good to go. All right. Hey, W2, <laughs> W2AEW. Uh, thanks for stopping by and saying hello. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, test driving some equipment at some point. Uh, I hear you've got the hookups of the really good stuff. So um, I'll, I'll reach out at some point to see if we can get some stuff for the office. Hey, Jeff Stack. All right. Uh, so today, for those of you that have been following along, you may know about the, the zombie game here. I will hit play. Actually, I need to plug in the glasses real quick. <laughs> Part-time says, that game board is big. No, this is actually the small game board, and I, I think at some point we need to do even smaller yet game board. Um, we have an even bigger one. Like the default kit comes with this like kind of d and size game board. Sweet. W T A E W. Who has the hookup with all the good test and measurement stuff? Okay. Well, anyway, those of you that um, have been following along, we've been making this voxel zombie game and uh, stacking up a lot of technical debt because it was based off of a Unity asset that I found in the asset store that was used for a uh, phone, mobile with touchscreen and I didn't bother ripping much of that stuff out and I keep stumbling over it. We did a play test the other day in the office and more stuff kind of creeped up because of the the mess that I was making in the project. So I'm going to clean that up first then we're going to get back to the loot system if uh, if I don't uh, burn up all of my time just trying to chase down all the junk that's in the project. But first let's play it real quick so you all can see if you haven't seen it. Whoa, that's loud. Let me turn that down a little bit. World's best streamer here, everybody. World's best streamer. And that's just not me saying that. That was the chat room uh, earlier that uh, dubbed me the world's best streamer out there. So in the game, uh, we have... Here, I'll go to the big, the big mix cast here. We have two characters in here right now, and then there's out of the laser point or out of the wand, there's this laser pointer that goes down, and that's your reticle where you fire. So if I point to something, I can fire. 
and then there's two players in here and I can move both players back and forth like that each player gets their own individual view right now up above the game board is another headset that's on like a microphone stand pointing down so I can do two players at once and uh, let's start the game and I'll just show that off real quick so there's three waves of zombies um, that come at you so we're in wave one right now and we just point to them and shoot it's actually a, it turned out to be a pretty good uh, control mechanism just pointing uh, down at what you want to shoot with the wand uh, let me know if the audio is too loud all uh, sounds a little loud to me up oh, game over already <laughs> I died anyway that's the basic game um, all of this this game over looks backward to, to all of you because the mix cast camera which is doing the compositing is at the far side of the table so I didn't break anything earlier when we just hacked on it to get it ready for our play test yesterday so that's that's good so the first thing that I want to tackle is um, finish off what was uh, an issue we had earlier where the menus weren't going away for player two and so I go to the scene view here right now we have I wonder if I can rename that without uh, player one yes see a w2 um, so under the tilt five prototype this is where all the tilt five goodness lives uh, we have two game boards um, in here right now and i'll bright or i'll darken that up so you all can see that really quick so this is uh, representing the game board that you saw the game on and each player has one of these game boards and there's a little script that we wrote in an earlier episode where it says follow object script and we got our buddy chat GPT to help us out to do this and um, what it does is it follows the actual game character itself and keeps the game board the tilt 5 game board centered and so when you do a tilt 5 game everything is centered around the game board so if you move the game board within the scene um, that's where that particular player is going to see uh, the experience and then we have a separate game board, uh, game board two for the second player. Right now they're on top of each other. Actually, I can hit play and demonstrate that. Giga Gamer uh, says, very good game. Looks like Hotline Miami in 3D. I don't think I've ever played Hotline Miami. Um, yeah, I'm uh, pretty pleased at how well this is uh, turning out so far. So as I move one of the characters around you can see the game board is following the character yeah in one of the earlier episodes we also um, made separate layers for each player's UI but as soon as we tried to play test it uh, everyone's like oh my god the UI is stuck in my face it doesn't go away when the game starts so I realized that I forgot to uh, hook all of that stuff up let me turn the game board brightness down a little bit. Okay. How old is Hotline Miami? I don't remember it. So each player has on their game board, we have UI that's attached to it. So when we drop down in here and we look, there's the main menu UI. And one of these, yeah, there's various uh, menus on here. Is this the one? Yeah, I gotta get in closer. Must be this. 
Okay, I'm going to temporarily turn off the other game boards. Okay, so tool tips is, I guess, what I called it, um, that describes how to play the game. One point to aim, joystick to move left, right, trigger to shoot, press one to start. Anyway, that was being that was stuck in uh, player two's face all the time. And in this area up here, is it core? Yeah, so on uh, this game object called core has the game, game logic script. And it has all these events and what should be done uh, oops, when certain things happen. You know, event start game, event pause, uh, pause game, resume game and so on. So I didn't have all of this stuff hooked up properly. So Giga Gamer says Hotline Miami is a 2012 top-down shooter game developed by Denaton Games. Let's take a look at that. I'm curious. I would like to get this game done and over with kind of roughly uh, this weekend in kind of a, a good, here, I was born in 1934. Um, so I can move on to start playing with Godot, considering all of the latest uh, drama around uh, Unity. I almost feel like I've played this before. Maybe I played this at Valve where you had to sneak around. Oh, I I think I have played this. You could bash people's heads in. Yeah. We won't be nearly that uh, gory on, on this game. Okay, so I want to try to clean up some of this stuff. We have a bunch of dead stuff around here in this like script that's doing the event system. So I'm just going to start cleaning it up. So there's a bunch of these pause game things that aren't hooked up. So I'm going to just get rid of them for now. And there's a couple events up here that aren't hooked up. The re uh, when I say they're not hooked up um, in this area, there's, here, let me describe it, like the main menu for player one is uh, set active when the game starts. And then we have, there used to be something hooked here and there's no game object hooked to it, so we can nuke that. I hope. Yeah. Wave one. Game start wave one. Oh, that starts the. When that event happens, it starts all the zombies. Spawning. Uh, Jeff says, but saying this looks like Hotline isn't like saying it looks like Gauntlet because it's simple top down. Didn't quite follow that. Um, oh, let's get back to cleaning this stuff up. Uh, what do you all think about the uh, Unity 3D news? Uh, let's see. More unhooked up things. Not hooked up.
I felt like something was hooked up here in pause, but I deleted it. Oopsie. Oh well. We don't have to worry about pause right now because there's no time to stop when you're playing Voxel Zombie. Plus pause is just the P button. Hmm. We're gonna have to interrogate this script at some point. All right, let's make sure I didn't break anything. Still good. We're good. I'm so excited that we have haptics available to add games now. Oh, and I found some more oddities in my collection to show today. So there's going to be a, uh, a test a little bit later. So whenever you want um, want to be tested on your nerd knowledge, let me know and I will grab something and we'll see who can answer it first. Uh, Fungas asks, can you port Doom to it? Um, I'm surprised someone hasn't ported Doom to this already. I would imagine you could, there's probably Doom clones in uh, uh, Unity already. <laughs> Jeff says, lol, typos galores. All I meant was saying your game looks like Hotline would be the same as saying it looks like Gauntlet simply because it's top-down game. <laughs> oh, whatever. Um, all right, I like that. That's a lot cleaner. I'm tired of looking at that junk. Uh, Let's see, uh, there was a bunch of stuff under the, each of the players, the player controllers here in the agent script. There was a bunch of junk in here and I wanna go take a look at that and try to get rid of some of that. Um, there's a bunch of references uh, to some of these functions in here that we're gonna start modifying and I wanna make sure that when we start modifying them, we don't get weird syntax errors. Oh yeah, and there was move left and right. I think I wanted to clean that up as well. So part of the touchscreen control there were, were these little functions that just went and called start firing and stop firing within the same file. It seemed a little redundant to me, so we'll get rid of that. And move left and right, I think, is referenced by our script that we put together. So player T5 input. So I want to replace move left and move right to go directly into those, those functions. Can I click here? Yeah, here it is. Okay. So it's agent dot, can I just say go left? No, it's behavior go left. Go right. Oops. I learned my lesson ages ago keep some of the old stuff around when you're hacking and slashing like this oh Jeff Stack asked 
do I still have my C64 base? Unfortunately, I don't. It was stolen quite a few years ago, probably like 10 years ago. We were doing a game jam and someone stole it. It was really sad. We invited a, invited a bunch of people over and did this game jam over a weekend, then it went missing, which makes me sad. Everyone asked me, you know, why don't you make a new one? And it's like, uh, you know, it was fun building it the first time, but I guess you just had to be there to experience it. I vaguely remember from that night there was someone really obsessed with it and wanting to, you know, play with it, but the batteries were dead in it. I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to open it up and put batteries because it was a Commodore 64 shell and you had to take the screws out and replace all the, the batteries and stuff. All right, so I have zero references. To this. Make sure I didn't fork anything. If this still works. Yep, we're still going left and right. I forgot if I asked, um, what do you guys think of the Unity situation? Uh, anyone in here making a game and is that going to impact you? Boom. Less code. Uh, hit. What does hit do? This must be when the player gets hit. Okay. I think I understand what's happening. So, monster comes up, zombie comes up, hits the player, it passes the amount of damage into hit. And then hit points get minus damage and instantiate special effects on hit at the position of the player and rotation. Oh, part-time says you like the dress that I was wearing back then. Yeah, I still have that dress. Uh, it also light, that dress lights up. Of course, with COVID and everything, I've been eating like a, a slob and I probably wouldn't be able to squeeze into it. And I was also doing roller derby at the time, which kept me really, really healthy and fit. So I think I need to get back into uh, doing violent sports, get my weight back down. Uh, I'm going to look at the special effects. I don't know if it's been assigned or not, because I don't recall seeing any special effects. So here's the agent script. What's it called? Oh, FX hit. Oh, so this is what the special effects look like. It's, I guess it's blood splattering. Ron says, I smell Ellen Pow at Reddit. Make an over arch, overreaching move, then retract one step to where. One step to where, not quite. I don't think that was a complete uh, comment. No, you're probably right. I think they're going to have to backtrack some of that stuff. All right, let's go back to 
the agent script and see if there's anything really quick we can clean up in there. So enemy.cs is referencing this. I think this is okay. We're definitely going to have to get in here and modify this, I think. Because we might be changing the way we get take damage in the future. Oh, this is interesting. Um, the Dico routine has nothing in it, or no references. So it waited for two seconds. I guess when they were making this, maybe they intended some special sound effects or something or special effects when you die. Yeah, there's been a lot of um, companies shooting themselves in the feet re recently. Uh, Wizards of the Coast, the OGL stuff, that was uh, entertaining to watch in real time. The pseudo update. So that's being called within the script. Start firing, stop firing. Firing mechanism. We got in here and hacked a bunch of stuff. Hide. We don't have hide hooked up to anything because I think you can duck behind things. So far in the game, I don't know what hide is going to do for us. Um, maybe if we add some functionality, if the zombies can see you, they can sprint towards you. Why do I have squigglies on this? Uh oh, it's something with nav mesh is obsolete. Uh, let's try to fix that. It recommends is stopped. If we do this, true. Oh, what's the usage here? Is it just is stopped? No. Nope. Equals true. All right. that down here too. It will be a really nice and high quality game console. Okay. Uh, let's see if I broke it by messing with the nav mesh stuff. So um, for those of you not familiar with nav mesh, you can set it up and um, it's kind of an AI to help uh, NPCs and players and enemies and stuff navigate around objects. I don't know a ton about it, but I've kind of uh, messed around with it in the past and got things to work so I could have players go through terrain and around objects and stuff. And it kind of it has a kind of makes it, it looks like a mesh when I played with it where you know the the places where the character can actually go all right make sure I didn't break anything all 
so far I can't move the character. I'm glad I'm checking. Character can't move anymore. So. What is wrong? Maybe it should be false. Oh, of course. If I would have just read what it was doing, agent is stopped. False. No, we're in go left and go right. <laughs> Mr. EQ says, hey, did you hear? You better not deploy this game anywhere because Unity is going to ruin you. Trust me, we're not going to hit the threshold on this uh, steaming pile of whatever it was. Uh, is it 100,000 installs? But I am going to put it up into a uh, share folder uh, very, very soon. I wanted to do it today, but we didn't quite get uh, Rev 1.4 of the driver out the door. So uh, since I, went in, I wanted the haptic so bad uh, in the wand, I went ahead and pushed... Uh, the game forward into Rev 1.4 internally with our internal build so that I could uh, have fun and maybe next week every time we turn around there's a little uh, bug here or there that they want to address like this bootstrapping bug right here that if you're popping in and out of the uh, editor, it takes a really long time for the glasses to bootstrap. I mean, the wand to bootstrap its position. I actually think I met uh, Riccatello one time. So at my previous startup, uh, I was doing the circuit meeting all the venture capitalists. And I think he was a venture capitalist at one of the firms. You know, or it was very possible um, they were talking about Riccatello. OK, let's. Go down here. Here's our update loop. Once a frame. Uh, if we're hiding, it sets hiding. If we're firing, it sets firing. Uh, move. Points. This is an area we're going to have to edit because we're adding the loot pickups and adding the health points to your character. And as we were starting to work on that before, we realized that it's going to be possible while you're dead to pick up health packs and revive yourself. And it wasn't quite clear whether uh, that's the behavior we really want. Pickups. Can you all hear me okay? I moved the microphone off to the side because people were um, complaining about it being too close to my laptop, howling, the fan howling. For whatever reason, when I turn on OBS, the fan in this thing just howls like crazy. I can see, you know, on the VU meter on the screen here, it looks like it's still picking up lots of fan noise.
Hi, Sean. Good to see you. I think that's a lot better in there. Um, wait, I saw I saw there were a bunch of references to some of this stuff, like stop firing, start firing that went to game camera. Touch script button fire. Unity UI button fire. Oh, that's kind of weird. I didn't. Uh, is there a tilt five? Yeah, tilt five. Mobile TPS code game camera. Uh, so the chat's saying you can play games like Sokoban with this device, and I think multiplayer would be pretty good. Let's take a look. Uh, I'm not recalling what uh, Sokoban is. Math is fun. Is that what you were th you're talking about? Is there a lot a lot of uh, Sokoban games out there? I want to. Game camera. I want to find out if game camera is in the uh, the scene somewhere. Where was that? Oh, thanks, Ron. I'm glad you like watching me just stumble through stuff. If you guys are up for it, uh, I'm going to try to crunch on this game pretty hard over the weekend because I'm heading off to Tokyo and then Taipei and then Seoul. So uh, the team kind of wants, they want to put it up on the lab as soon as possible once it's kind of complete-ish. And so since it's going to be like a long business trip, I'm not going to have much time to work on it. And they're all working on other games and stuff, so I don't want them like having to like deal with my junky code and learn it. So I might might be working a lot this weekend on it. Mobile TPS code game camera. Code. What does this do? I kind of feel like this is no longer in here. I wonder if I can just rename it and hide it from from Unity. Eventually, I want to get rid of all of the touch, touch scripts and stuff. Yeah, I think renaming it doesn't that break break it if it's actually used in the, the game.
Kel says, can't imagine publishers of Unity-powered CD-ROM titles available at public libraries being too excited about the install fee. Oh yeah, there's just so many different angles to their runtime install thing. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, the fact that they came out and said that, you know, if it's a web app, each time you open the web page and refresh, it's an install. That doesn't seem well thought out. All right, this is maybe a power user could figure this stuff out faster, but maybe I'll just go through the uh, hierarchy and see if I can find some of this stuff that's kind of dead. Player. I know I know the player prefabs pretty well. The floor is mine. Level setting. We hacked on that earlier. Environment. Sound. Oh, we definitely need to do something about the sound. That constant droning of zombies is pretty terrible. These are all the props, scene, lights, probably nothing in there. Dynamic. Fire smoke. Those are probably okay. Lights are probably okay. That this cube kind of hanging out here was the uh, loop pickup that we were starting to work on. So, uh, let's look what's hanging off of the UI. Probably what happened when I brought this over from the asset pack is I just dragged the UI onto the game board so that the UI would always be attached to the game board. So there might be some junk hanging out here. Okay. So that's the restart button. I think I can nuke that because we're not doing on screen. We're just using the joystick. Ron says fan noise ain't no thing. Bye bye. Yeah, we're going to keep game over. Get rid of restart button. Get rid of play button. Add. Get rid of the add. We're not doing microtransactions in here, but maybe I should because I'm going to get charged 20 cents per install when this becomes Tilt 5's killer app. Scripts hanging off here. Nope. Oh, frame rate counter might be fun to leave in. Main menu, crosshairs. Uh, what is this? I don't think that's the same reticle.
Sorry, I'm not very talkative because I don't know what the heck I'm looking at. And I'm just going to leave it for now. Pause, pause text. Don't see buttons on there. Sensitivity. That can go, oh, don't duplicate it, delete it. Get rid of the, this button, the reset button. I should have done that earlier because now Sai, I copied it all over here to the other game board. So now we have two copies of this stuff. Oh, I think I missed the... Hey, Javier. Good to see you. If you haven't checked out Mixcast, you should uh, go check out Mixcast for Tilt 5. It's really fun. Multiplayer, local and remote multiplayer. There's so much you can do in it. Uh, Bob Tipton asks, when you have the game running in Mixcast window, is the green screen in or is that what the camera sees looking through the glasses. Uh, don't quite follow exactly what you're asking, but I'll describe it really quick. So Mixcast uses any generic webcam. So right now I have a webcam sitting on a tripod kind of facing me towards the game board. This would be a good time to pause and make sure I didn't bust anything. So off over here is a webcam, it's just a generic webcam that's looking at the game board and then it looks for the dots around the board to identify where the board is and then it composites the uh, image on the board um, from that camera's angle. So if we look at the Unity view, when I hold the glasses over the game board this is the glasses view as I wiggle it around. And Mixcast has all kinds of like buttons and stuff that you can mess with and sliders that change like transparency and different effects. Um, it has some segmenting where it can try to chop parts of things like when you put your hands in, it tries to cut around your hands. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let me play this for a second. Make sure I didn't break anything since I've been deleting a bunch of stuff. Well, it was the first time I saw the wand pointer kind of doing its drifty thing. I thought that was um, kind of solved already. Obviously, there's still a couple little bugs. All right, looks like I didn't break it. Oh, good, it answers your question, cool. Um, so Mixcast is a free tool that you can download if you're making a game, you just drop it in. So uh, you just drop in wherever it is, Mixcast, into your assets, and you don't have to do anything. Now your game's Mixcast enabled, and then you install their application that lets you set up the webcams. And you can actually have multiple webcams, so you can, I don't know what the limit is. Like we've had like three or four cameras hooked up, and then you can just kind of toggle through them for different angles, which is kind of fun. 
Sean says, I heard and saw that a lot of, of the consumers and indie game devs are upset about the Unity news making a bad decision to change indie devs and even AA games, AAA games complain over overpricing Unity. Yeah, I've heard that it's like really, really bad for uh, the small person because, you know, if you're trying to make a 99 cent game and get off the ground or a free to play game, you know, a 20 cent install is, can be all of your profit on a, a kind of small title. So yeah, if you're uh, making a game for Tilt 5, grab Mixcast for sure. Um, we're just, we're trying to push everyone, even uh, third party developers, make sure that Mixcast's in there because it's really hard to show what a Tilt 5 experience is like if you don't have um, uh, Mixcast in there. It's like the closest thing that you can, you know, put in a video or on a, on a, on social media that actually kind of demonstrates what it's like. And this game's not even really showing off kind of the magic of Tilt 5 because nothing's very like uh, tall and popping off of the, the table. In fact, you can have like really tall stuff sticking out of the table, which is really fun. All right, why don't we take a break here now that we have enough people following or watching. Um, so it's gonna be Q&A time. I pulled something out of my retro computer junk and I wanna see if you guys can figure out what it is. It's, I have a whole theme going tonight, so I've got like two or three things I'm going to show. At least three things. All right, I'll have to be careful not to let you see the label on this, but what's this, what's this thing? Nope. You may have saw the label. Don't look, don't look. And while you uh, have to deal with the 20 second delay, I'm gonna see if I can pop this thing open. Cause it does open like a, a pie tin. So you can make two pieces. Blink says film. Yeah, it kind of looks like a, some kind of film canister. Hey Sherlock Ohms. Uh, Air Car says tape reel for an old mainframe. Uh, not quite. Bob Tipton, magnetic tape, not quite. Up. Oh, Steven got it. Steven got it. So it's a, a hard drive for, hard drive platter for an old mainframe. So if you look down in there, there's, it's a single platter on this, and this is where the spindle hooks up. And it's, ooh, that was loud. Somehow, uh, you know, spins it up. For newly drive. That's what. Yeah, this was uh, a data cartridge. Yeah. The media for these old mainframes were big and heavy. What's sad? I don't know how much. I wonder if it says, but. Um, uh, has an inspection date that I can't read. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how much um, this digital systems um, hard drive actually held. Uh, Steven says like 10 megabytes. Yeah, you know, now, now you get 10 megabytes, you know, you can't even, can't even do a Unity game in that. All right, let's get back to work. Uh, so I was deleting a bunch of stuff on the UI. I'm going to do that again. And I noticed that I probably forgot some buttons up on on one of these. Main menu, I think. Did it have some buttons? Where was I? Main menu game over. Oh, I must have got it. So this can go... Play button. And this is all for player two. I'll get rid of all that stuff because we're gonna do that with the joystick. The ad is gone. We, uh, we don't need a frame rate counter for player two. We left 
crosshairs there because I don't know what the heck it is. Oh, can I? Up on the player, I've got the target crosshair. So this, the reticle, this is what was scaring me deleting that because I, I was a little nervous that that was actually my spinning reticle. But I think we can nuke it. Wherever it is. Where was it? Get rid of that. And then I'll go back up here. Menu play. Sensitivity, resume, reset. U ULF, ULF Anderson says, my first hard drive was 20 megabytes, but that was three and a half inch disk. Yeah, that's about how big my first hard drive was. Um, it was either 20 or 40. It was for the Commodore 64. It was in a big metal case by CMD. And it cost a lot um, for me. I was just a kid. I think I had to work like an entire summer for it at $3 an hour. And it was somewhere in the order of like five or $600. But man, it was great. It's like, I'm never going to be able to fill this thing up with my Commodore 64 uh, software. And I don't think I ever did. I even uh, built a BBS on it and uh, never really filled it up. I kind of hate this pointer that's on here. I wonder how this is set. Hmm. Eric Carr says, we had an IBM PC with dual floppies. I found two 10 megabyte full size drives and an MFM controller at a hand fest and got them working. Had to give up one of the floppies to take the cover off and take the cover off. I loved those old MFM drives, especially the ones that had the big stepper motors on the side. It sounded like a percolator or, no, like a sewing machine running. That's more like it, percolators for coffee. How do they set this? Does anyone in the chat know how the cursor is set? Is this something under like player settings? Or is it a script thing? Ah, cursor, default cursor, none. We're not going to have anything fancy like a cursor on this. It's going to be plain Jane all the way. Yeah, that's better. One last check, make sure I didn't blow anything up. So Evil Cupra I had and still have an A590 Commodore 500 HD expansion device. It had originally a 20 megabyte hard drive and it was incredibly expensive. Yeah, I bet. I kind of remember this. It kind of sloped kind of the same profile as the 500. Yeah, I miss the days of uh, computers that got wider and wider. Uh, in my cabinet over here, I have a TI 99 not a 4A, and it was kind of the failed predecessor to the 994A. And I've been slowly collecting all the sidecars, so I'm trying to make the world's longest computer. Um, but I also have over here um, some of the world's, 
some of the world's uh, out of the box longest computers. So this Amstrad, I think, at least in my collection, this is the longest, uh, whitest computer, whitest computer that I have. I don't know, does anyone know if there's a wider computer than this by default without plugging in sidecars? It's like longer than my forearm. Sweet. All right. I feel better. I don't know if that bought us anything cleaning that up, but I think now uh, I want to try to do the uh, weapon and loot pickup stuff. Fun gas said, I thought the ZX micro drive had a lot of space. I was spoiled. I uh, when I got my Commodore 64, I ended up getting a 1541 disk drive along with it. So once I finally, a year or two into it, figured out how to actually format a floppy disk, it was pretty amazing. All right, so now I have to take my mind back to what I was doing for these loot pickups. Uh, okay, let's open this script. So I wanted to be able to make prefabs that have a script on them that is automatically transfer in the uh, transfer in um, however many points or bullets or what weapon was picked up. So we created this script that's just going to be, I think, mostly full of public variables that we can attach to our prefabs, which might be bullets or guns or whatever, and then we can change these values to whatever we want. So I started with hit points first, because I think that might be something we can actually like pick up and then see if it actually increased the hit points to our character. And Oh, that reminds me, there was another script. So um, the way I detected the pickup is from the reticle, the raycast down to the reticle. And I think, I think what I want to do is when I hit one of these with the reticle, I want to tell this the game object that has the agent on it and then have a little routine in this that just transfers what's ever in this um, in these variables. So first I'm going to add public game object. Uh, uh, no, no. Agent. Can I do that? Uh, why can't I do agent? Is it not a mono, mono behavior? Oh, it's the wrong namespace, I think. So this is the agent script, and it's in the Siryun mobile TPS. Okay, so when I raycast down from the wand and I hit the loot, when that hit happens, I want to grab that game object that's been hit. I want to tell it which player agent the wand is associated with. <laughs> Casual Kitty, 
I don't want to get into a keyboard measuring contest with you. Yeah, I got a big keyboard here and there. Um, as I look at some of my cabinets over here full of uh, computers, uh, the Osborne has a pretty big keyboard. Uh, the Atom, Clico Atom, has a pretty big keyboard when you have that little sidecar on it for the, the joystick. But I still think it's much shorter than that uh, Amstrad with the built-in uh, floppy, I mean, built-in cassette player. Uh, Steven Guy says, as far as home computers go, I doubt any were longer than the Amstrad. That might be true. Okay. So I'm going to make a function, a public function that I can... Uh, that I can call from my raycasting script and kick this function off that will take the agent that I in that same raycast script that I told it where the agent is and then it'll transfer the hit points over what should I call it this function mm. give Attributes. I don't know. I'm terrible at this stuff. I forgot to say void. Uh, let's do something really simple. So it's going to be agent, agent dot. HP hit points were float, I think, which I felt was a little weird before. Where's that agent script? Yeah, it's float. Uh, so we can work in fractions of hit points if we want. Anderson says uh, naming is hard. Yeah, I, I most immediately regret some of these things that I name. Uh, is it possible to go, I wonder, can I do that? Yeah, I guess that's possible. Casual Kitty says, I can't help with coding. I'm a web app dev, but future game dev idea. Games Workshop is hot, ready to expand their empire. Tell them to get Games Workshop Tell them to give us a call. I think that works. If the script knows the agent, and then the, I call this, I'm going to add the hit points. Let's go find in the editor my little cube, which we can pick up. Let's do something sizable, like a thousand hit points if you pick it up. Now, let's go to the thing that has the ray cast on it. So the point, this point position is hooked on the tip of the wand and it ray casts down, collides with the floor, which is a a uh, plane that's invisible so that's how we know where the reticle is striking but also I added a little bit of code to this earlier uh, 
Oh. Yeah, I wanted to fix this. So um, this sets up a ray cast at a 45 degree angle down. Oh, TEG -E says, I think it's plus equal. Thanks. Plus equal. I guess we'll find out pretty soon which direction it was supposed to be. Okay, so um, this ray cast goes down and hits everything, and then we get a list of things that it's hit, and then we loop through everything that it hits, and there were two things that were happening. So this one, if it hits a thing with a game object name, oh, oh no, if it matches game object floor, which I was assigning in the editor, then it moves the target pointer, the reticle, into that position. But I think there might be a little cleaner way to do this if we do the same thing we were doing down here for the loop pickup. So this is the other piece of code we put in where we looked for a tag instead of a particular game object named loot in semi-leet speak. And what we did last video is we just destroyed it so we knew we hit it. Oh, okay, so tag was right, or T-E-G, I don't know how to pronounce your handle. Um, let's do a tag on the floor because I don't, I don't like having to assign that game object all the time in the editor. So here on the wand uh, raycaster, I was having to drag the floor game object into each one of the player's wands. I think we should just make it a tag. So we're going to make a new tag for the floor. Keep with our elite speak, so some zeros in there. And we're going to set it to floor. Hey, not another dev. I missed you last time. I must have missed out on, uh, I didn't see you in the stream last two nights ago or something. Uh, not another dev. I forget. Are you in Europe? Is that what you said last time? So we are going, going to do it by... Oh, there goes the box clocks across the room. Floor. Not another dev. I released a game. I'm dead. <laughs> Was that game in Unity? Everyone needs to know. Ah, UK, and it's it's 2 a.m. Yeah, drop a drop a link to your game that you released. Let everyone know. Let's see how badly I broke it. Ah, good move, not another dev. Not in Unity. Was it Godot? Ah, look at that, it works. So we are colliding with the object with the floor tag. Just curious, just for fun. Uh, let's tag something else in there because I think doing this tag could be useful because we may want to have terrain that is, you know, at different heights at some point. So let's go into the scene and let's tag 
this police car with floor just temporarily. So it should be the one that's kind of to probably your right on the stream. Fun gas, it's 4 a.m. in Cyprus. Yep. I don't know if you can see that very well on the stream. But here I'm on a plane that's just above the terrain, and then I can come over to the police car and I pop up on top and back down. I like it. Set that back. Oh, not another dev says uh, the game is, it's like a sandbox tool for making games. Well, that's cool. All right, I set the tag back. So it's not going, you know, the reticle's not going up onto the, the police car. Oh, did it trim out the link that you tried to drop in, not another dev? Not another dev says it lets you just dive in and make worlds using visual scripts without thinking too much. I like that. I don't like to think too much. So. Whoa. What happened? I hit a button. Gen X Retro says, wake up, Jerry. I don't know. What did I miss? I am tired today. It's been a long week of preparing for this uh, trip to Japan and Taiwan and Korea. And plus having all the conversations with them super late at night. Okay. Where were we? Oh, we were going to, first, I'm gonna get rid of that junk in that script that's looking, for, that's the public variable for the floor. So we don't need it anymore. Boom, get rid of this, and that'll make things a lot cleaner, I think, in the editor. So point position. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Why don't we clean that up too? I think this was just my limited knowledge of Unity back in the day. I think I wanted the transform position of the wand pointer, but it I'm on the actual game object, so I should be able to just grab the transform position and rotation. Moki Customs, Jerry, what do you do for energy? Energy drinks, coffee, nicotine, tea, dark chocolate? Uh, basically all of those. Um, I've been a little bit addicted to um, this Japanese caffeinated uh, mint called black black it's uh super uh highly caffeinated oh someone's saying the audio is low i moved the microphone this time uh gen x retro so i can try moving it closer sorry it's bouncing around and making noise I was trying to get away from the uh, 
the PC fan. I used to have the little microphone right here, but whenever I run OBS, it just howls um, like crazy. It just spins the fan up maximum. <laughs> Chris says, Jerry runs on heavy fuel. Yeah, heavy water and deuterium. Okay, uh, let's get rid of some of this embarrassing uh, s stuff that I did a year ago. Because I think I can just be a little more... pointer position. So the pointer position, so those of you that haven't done anything in Tilt 5, uh, let me show you real quick. So there's Tilt 5 Manager, and this is where you can set up uh, a lot of things for the Tilt 5 system. So, oops, 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 I just busted my chat window. Sorry, let me fix that. So in the Tilt 5 Manager, each player for local multiplayer is here. You can set up things like what happens with the wand. And so you can put game objects into different positions just attached to your right wand and your left wand. So here, I attached player 1's wand to this empty game object called point position, which holds the script point position, you know, uh, limited rotation something, I must, uh, naming naming right totally regret the name now but anyway this ray casts down to the player and moves the reticle around so the player can look at the the reticle and then you can fire at the enemies and what i want to do is since it's attached to the same script i just i think i could just go in wherever point position wand pointer is and just change that to transform position that. I don't think I knew that a year ago that you could just do that and I should be able to just get rid of that. And it should still work. <laughs> Gen X Retro says if I turn around you might see a, a giant battery like the uh, Energizer Bunny. Sometimes I feel like it. I don't get much sleep sometimes. Although last night I got to the couch and started watching YouTube videos, and I'm like, I'm just going to close my eyes for a few seconds. I'm totally going to wake up, totally. Next thing I know, it was 3 in the morning. All right, let's see how badly I busted it. Come on, wands. Yep, still works. There we go. I need to report to the team that the more you just leave your wand sit it, sitting, the more unlikely it is to bootstrap right away, which has been a long-standing bug that still seems to be there. ULF says, is, uh, is, how do you say your name? A, is it ULF or ULF? I don't know if that's an acronym or a, a name I'm not familiar with. Anyway, uh, they say, your, co your old code, the worst kind of code, as you can't blame anyone else. I agree with that. Uh, someone's asking, what's my go-to uh, political YouTuber. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't talk about politics, but um, yeah, I do watch a lot of political YouTube considering the United States is 
ripping apart at the seams. All right, see, it's not look a lot cleaner now. I like it. Okay, so now some of our technical debt is cleaned up and probably introduced a lot more. Uh, so on that cube, so On this cube we have hanging out here. I'm going to make this cube bigger so we can see it. This cube is our flute that we're going to pick up. When the wand hits it now, as coded, it just destroys the game object and removes it from the scene. Yeah, Gen X Retro says, no, politi no politics, someone is always pissed. I totally agree. You know, it'd be, of course, I'm sitting here like, eh, unity this, unity that. That's kind of political, isn't it? Considering that probably 95% of our games are on unity. Might be biting the dog that feeds us. Or, I'm, no, that, that made no sense. I should go home and go to bed. Um, Biting the hand that feeds us? Uh, Moki asks if I'll be driving in Japan and will you visit the, oh, I can't even say it, <laughs> the Hachiko doggy statue in Shibu, I can't say it, sorry. Stupid American, that's what I am. I am going to Akihabara and I'm gonna be hitting all of those really cool retro shops that are down kind of sketchy uh, basement stairs and up really narrow stairways to the like fifth floor of a building, you know, full of all kinds of Japanese retro coolness and uh, again, my luggage will be bulging um, at the seams full of uh, oddities that I can't find over here. Okay, why don't we take a break and uh, why don't I... It's quiz time. It's quiz time again. I'm going to hold something up and see who can figure this out. So get your typing fingers ready. I'm going to hide... Let me look at it real quick and hide the label. I'm going to hold it up. So what, what is this little gizmo? Again, I need to get a new webcam here. This is something I pulled out of our junk bin and it, it doesn't focus very well. Type in your guesses. Some of you, this is gonna be instantly recognizable for those of you in the United States and other regions around the world, it's going to maybe be a little bit um, harder to, uh... yeah, everyone's like, it's out of focus. I know, it's a shitty webcam. Teg says, flux capacitor. Good guess, good guess. N64 memory expansion card. 92K, a fuse, mini 8-track cassette, game cartridge, a mem card. Got to think older than that. It's much older. Someone said MSX question. Ah, uh, Starlight got it. It's a stringy floppy. Well, did they, did Sinclair, did Sinclair actually call it stringy floppy? But this was the little uh, uh, tape cassettes. 
that um, plugged into this into this computer. So here's this computer. It has two little tape slots here. And you push that in, it goes in at a weird angle. Feels, it always feels weird to me when I'm pushing this in. Everyone's like, turn it around, turn it around. I couldn't turn it around because it says Sinclair on it. Of course, you couldn't actually read that because my webcam is can't focus that close. All right, fine. Next time I do this, I'll have a better webcam. Promise. Okay. All right, let's go back to coding. I like coding with all of you here because I only get like two things done each night, but it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, Tom asks, where do I store my collection? Um, I have a big benefit right now because the Tilt 5 offices are quite large because we need a lot of meeting space for like doing Unity dev nights and things like that. And um, it's an excuse to have lots of cabinets and shelves around full of cool retro stuff. Not another dev says, come to the dark side, Logitech G920. Um, yeah, we have a lot of Logitech webcams around the office because Logitech is one of our investors. And I have to admit, this thing out of the junk bin is something that's like a Microsoft Life Cam. It's probably from 1999. I don't know how it showed up here, but all of the nicer um, like 4K webcams are in all of the devs' rooms or in our... our uh, kind of playtest room where we capture a lot of footage for the website. Okay, back back to business. Okay, cool. Uh, we cleaned up our reticle moving around, so it's going by a tag. And then so here's our tag for loot. And we're gonna not destroy the object. Well, Let's destroy it, because I want it out of the scene, because I think we might get in a race condition if I'm just constantly colliding with it. Okay, so I need to be able to access that script. I go what did I call that script it was called can I do this loop variables loot equals game object dot no mm. Why am I forgetting how to do this? So I know I've, oh, it's transform. Maybe it's transform dot game object dot. No. Yeah, the chat has some suggestions on how to handle this. Is it find, um, find it's, gotta find the script, find by name. Get component. Get 
food variables. That. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Oh, chat, does that look like that works? I need to I need to find that loot script on the game object we collided with that has the right tag. Took me way longer than it should have. So loot um, loot dot. Okay, Moki says that's right. I have. I almost went to ChatGPT to do it for me. So I want to, so in loot, I want, oh, what did I call it? Um, agent. Can you really consider, <laughs> chat says, don't worry, you also have a full-time job. Is being a CEO a full-time job or 120%? job. I just I need to learn some of these Riccatello moves though. Yeah. Till till five is five ninety nine for a two player pack, but we're gonna charge you every time you plug it in uh, twenty cents. What do you think everyone? Do you think that's that would be a good business model? Something a CEO would decide to do. Agent. Uh, I need to find this. This big long thing. Why am I all squiggly? Can I just find agent? Let's check with chat. Not in a, another dev says probably like 200x job because it controls if you eat. Yeah, it's true. This video is sponsored by Till Five because it puts food on the table. Buy your system today. And the, the scary thing is it's you know also helps 20 other people eat too. So it's a look keeps me up at night at at times. Not another, another dev says, don't worry, Godot will make it easy to port, hopefully with all the drama llama going on. <laughs> uh, agent isn't accessible. Is it just this piece of it? Loot variable does not contain a definition for Siri Yoon. All right, we're gonna have to Moki says, love the white noise. Ah, oh, darn it, I tried to uh, to make it better. Moki says, can you do Till 5 live stream gameplay soon? Uh, let me know what you want, want to see uh, played. Uh, on the Till 5 Twitter, every once in a while, we 
about once a week or so we'll do some kind of live stream. Wait, it says agent right there. Agent. Loot is a variable is used like a type. <coughs> what am I doing wrong? Loot is a variable is used like a type. Oh, okay. I was getting a little scared because of all the squigglies. Okay, finally, after a lot of flailing, I figured out how I can access the loot variable script. I can access agent dot hit points. And what well, now? Um, Oh, 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 I'm doing this backwards. I want to take off of my loot script, I want a float called hit points. I want to, I want to pull in the hit points from the script that's hanging on the prefab, which is going to be the weapons and all the loot and stuff that we pick up. And No, 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 no. What am I doing? Uh, sorry, ignore everything I'm doing. So, it needs to be a game object. Here, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to make a public game object called player. I'm, I'm still flailing here. So this is the thing that's hanging off the wand. I want a public Sirion mobile agent, which I'm going to set in the editor for each of the players. Okay, okay. Getting closer, I think. And then loot dot, what was my function called? Give attributes. This is embarrassing. I know Javier is sitting here watching me do this and not another dev and all these amazing devs that can do stuff way faster than me. I'm feeling super inferior right now. Okay, I'm gonna call this function. All right, so I'm gonna tell it where the player agent is on the loot script, and then I'm gonna call this function that's gonna transfer the hit points, and then I'm gonna destroy the game object.
uh, Jeffrey says, why are you doing a for loop instead of a for each? I don't know, because I suck at programming. I'm a chip designer. <laughs> I find all this programming stuff uh, very alien to me. Okay, I think this works. So now I have to go to the editor and tell the, the thing hanging off the wand pointer where our agent is. And so let's go back to the editor. All right, so it's not assigned yet. So the agent is, is hanging off of character. So I should be able to drag that in there. There's our agent. Let's do that for player two. All right. All right, both wands are now set up with each of their characters, so either player player one or two should be able to grab hit points. Uh, okay. It, I think it's time, I'm going to hit save before we hit play. I think it's time for uh, another uh, Q&A, test time, test time, and then I want you guys to think whether this is actually going to work after this flailing around that I did. So get ready. I think this is going to be easy for you all. You know, and you probably already figured out the, the theme of tonight's Jerry's junk from the retro shelf, but here we go. What do you think this is? I can't turn it all the way around because you'll see. Here we go, Moki says. It's like a really nice bracelet. Bam. Fast. Air car got it. Magnetic tape spool. Tape, tape, tape. Everyone got it. I should have I should have started um, with this. So uh, this is uh, new old stock uh, tape from uh, Digital Equipment Corp. Deck. Let's see if I... I don't know if I've ever really opened this. But um, it's exactly what you would imagine. It's just a, a spool of tape. What is that? About a half inch? Was this stuff 9-track? Um, is that what they called it? 9-track tape? Okay, well, I put this back together, put in your predictions whether all my janky code's going to run and I'm going to be able to um, pick up that loot cube and get a thousand extra hit points. What do you think? Yay or nay? For some reason, nine track uh, sounds familiar to me too, uh, Eric. Um, let me get on to player one agent. I think hit points is public, so we can look. <laughs> Moki says it's gonna run perfect. I love that confidence. Uh, let's see, hit points in the agent script is visible. Okay, right here. <laughs> Air car says, what could go wrong? Right here is my hit points, so if I collide with that block, it should be 1,100. Right. Here it goes. Oh, 
Oh, come on, wand. You haven't been sitting there idle that long. Okay, I'm going to creep over to it. Oh, interesting. I'm colliding with it. <laughs> oh, am I kicking errors? What's going on? A null reference. Oh, it's always a freaking null reference. Moki, you let, or oh, was it Moki? You let me down. You said it was perfect. A null reference. Always a null reference. Uh, so what was null about it? What? I thought I already set up the agent on this. How did I lose the agent? I'm going to have to rewind the stream. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I swear to you all that I put that that agent in there. <laughs> it's okay, Moki, don't cry. It's all right. It's, it's Unity's fault. It's Unity's fault because we all saw, saw that I put it in there. I probably hit Control Z. All right, let's get back to that player and see if, if we did it. All right, I'm gonna hit it. Ah, another null reference. Blame the scroll wheel. Point position. What was that about when I left? Eh? Eh? <laughs> uh, OBS has an instant replay feature, doesn't it? So I have this public agent, agent, and then we go down to where I'm getting the null reference. I'm trying to set the loot variable loot dot agent to the agent. It says agent here. You're destroying inside the loop. Outside the loop. Hmm, let's look at that code. So if I hit an object with the tag, I'm getting the loot variable script called loot, and then I'm accessing the local variable assigning it our agent oh Jeffrey says I should set a break as soon as the exception hits and 
then I call the function and I destroy. Hmm. Oh yeah, so we're talking about, so we have an array of hits up here. So every object the ray cast hits. And then we iterate through every object in the array. If it's floor, we move the reticle. If it's the loot, then we drop in here and do this. Hmm. Well, I thought that would uh, clean stuff up. I'm confused. Voltronic says, where is agent assigned? Okay. So this is hanging off the wand and it's doing the ray cast. And here's the public variable which is this agent script in its namespace, calling it agent. Then down here, if I hit something that has an agent script. Oh, could it be, oh, could it be this? Oh, 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 here, let me add a if. If loot not equal null, it may be that I'm not actually getting the component loot variable. So maybe I have uh, maybe I had two instances of something being null. Let's see if it'll just destroy the, the game object. What I need to do is I need to uh, uh, set up a uh, like a Skype call so I can uh, Skype call one of you guys in so we can do some pair programming on this. Bloop, gone. Okay. Uh, so it's my I'm getting a null because I'm not actually finding the loop variable script on that cube. Wait, that should not be set yet. That should be none. Agent declared, but is it assigned? I didn't see it. So um, up on the ray cast, it's assigned. So player one, I'm only dealing with the player one wand right now. This is the player agent. And then this is the loot down here. I don't know if this had anything to do with it, but uh, I must have made a mistake and assigned that to player one for some reason. 
but still it doesn't explain why I'm getting a null. So there's something wrong with this line here. So I'm trying to find class loot variable loot transform game object get component loot variable isn't that right this is the thing I flailed for like an hour trying to type in let me play it one more time I, I don't think I don't think it should have mattered that I had a, a something assigned in that Cube. All right, that's not a sign now. Actually, let me do, well, I do want to destroy it. Okay. No, I don't want to destroy it. I won't be able to see. Chris says, is agent in scope? Uh, let's take a look. Voltronics API stuff shouldn't have to be so complicated. Uh, all right, I'm going to take this out right now. not going to destroy the object. Tom, are you trying to loot to get the loot variable from the recast object? If so, should loot equal hit trans Oh, 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 oh. That's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. That was it. I wasn't pulling it from the list. It was actually trying to find it on the wand itself. It's totally going to work this time. Totally. All right, let's get back up to player one. I think I'm fooling myself that I'm going to get this into a good place where the team can put it out on the lab by end of the weekend. Especially when I want to stop and play all the time uh, showing off stuff on the stream. That's okay. Uh, quickly, quickly, right here, we're watching right there. Oh, this bug drives me nuts, the bootstrapping bug. All right, all right, uh, uh, yay, <laughs> yay, that took a lot of work, and one of you probably could have done that in a minute. Okay, there's a lot of debate about uh, why I should be using for each in my loop. Um, maybe I will have to explore that next time. Yeah, we did it. We did it one step closer. 
one step closer. All right, uh, before I sign off, let's see, have I shown all, okay. Here's another easy one, slightly easy. All right, it's another Q&A for all of you. Get your typing fingers ready. Uh, thank you all for uh, giving me encouragement. Um, I don't know if I necessarily deserve it today. Definitely didn't deserve it last stream when I couldn't seem to do anything right. Don't forget, Till Five puts food on the plate so I can entertain you by making uh, silly mistakes. Air Car says loop tape for a toy. Endless tape for something. That's right, it's an endless tape. Uh, I don't know what a QIC80 is. Uh, John got it. John Reine got it. Well, kind of. You got to say it by the full name or it doesn't count. Servo head, head cleaner, correcting tape, yarn. Nope, I haven't got the uh, proper name for it. A till five. Hey, Bill Hurd. We're, we're blessed with Bill Hurd, the amazing uh, Commodore engineer. That's amazing. Oh, you're so close, John. An old tape backup thingy. Nope, nope. Come on, Bill. You got it. You got it. Come on, Bill. You should know this. Wick. <laughs> so, one of you said this. Stringy floppy. You got it. You got it. Stringy floppy. Back when... Uh, you know, stupid, mar stupid marketing people, you know, um, had to compete against uh, floppy disks, but they only had audio cassette technology, so they had to call it a stringy floppy. All right, uh, that was fun, everyone. Thank you for hanging out with me. Go buy your Till 5 systems uh, and build a game. Not in Unity, apparently. Uh, Godot, we have Godot support and Unreal. All right, I'm gonna go um, start my weekend, but I'm probably gonna stream a bunch uh, over the weekend. Hopefully it doesn't uh, piss off too many of my fans. It's so funny, uh, doing these live streams are very polarizing for my audience. They're like, you know, sending me messages, like I miss the days when you would burn, burn Furbies. Oh, just drop test a tilt five as I do every day. All right, see you guys later. Bye.